Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I will be dealing with the subject of mesoporous silica nanoparticles from tissue regeneration to a good nanocarrier. But uh, first, let me show you the work that we are doing with them in my research group. We are using them as starting materials for biomedical applications. Therefore, let's see which is the framework for biomaterials. Biomaterials are made of either natural or artificial components which must show biocompatibility in the human body. They are currently used to repair or replace the damaged tissue, namely bone, teeth and skin, and likely other tissues such as liver and kidney in the near future. The main aim of biomaterials is to improve the quality of life by slowing the deleterious consequences of aging. Great advances in tissue regeneration have taken place during the last 70 years within the frame of biomedical engineering, which involves multidisciplinary interaction among different professionals. The current requirement of more than 2 million bone implants is mainly addressed by using autologous bone samples or allografts from bone donors. Autografts are the gold standard due to their pore size range and their content of biomolecules and osteoprogenitors, which confer them osteoconductor, osteoinductor, and osteogenic properties. However, autographs have... Hey. Sorry. Biomaterial... ...in the near future. The main aim of biomaterials is to improve the quality of life by slowing the deleterious consequences of aging. Great advances in tissue regeneration have taken place during the last 70 years within the frame of biomedical engineering, which involves multidisciplinary interaction among different professionals. The current requirement of more than 2 million bone implants is mainly addressed by using autologous bone samples or allografts from bone donors. Autografts are the gold standard due to their pore size range and their content of biomolecules and osteoprogenitors, which confer them osteoconductor, osteoinductor, and osteogenic properties. However, autographs have limitations such as the amount of bone available and morbidity associated with the surgical procedure. Biomaterials are highly recommended to regenerate bone in the setting of critical defects or infection. Another option in tissue regeneration involves stem and pluripotent cell therapy, which requires providing a biocompatible support to promote cell proliferation and differentiation. For all these aforementioned implantable biomaterials, new designs based on novel material combinations and coatings produced by state-of-the-art technology are becoming accessible. These newly developed biomaterials are expected to revolutionize the field of implants, biomimetic and functional materials, nanotechnology, modeling based on finite elements, additive manufacture, 3D printing, tissue engineering, controlled drug release. These newly designed biomaterials ideally would not only regenerate the target tissue, but also supply mechanical support and prevent surgery-related infection. Different tissue engineering approaches aim to promote bone regeneration by using stem and pluripotent cell therapy. Bone tissue engineering implies the use of biocompatible porous templates commonly manufactured with bioactive bioceramics, calcium phosphates, bioactive glasses, which are osteoconductor and can be decorated with osteoinductive molecules that favor cell growth and differentiation. All these laboratory developments must benefit the patient. Thus, their emphasis must lie in translational research. Until the year 2000, mesoporosilica nanoparticles were not among these uh, used for manufacturing of biomaterials, but uh, this is changing. Let's take a look at the origins of the field of 
Research. Research of mesoporosilic materials is at the limelight since it has developed an exciting work in chemical synthesis, responsible for a, an enormous amount of exciting practical uh, applications for the welfare of society, for example, in catalysis. The research of ordered mesoporous materials uh, started at Mobile Corporation in, in uh, 1992. Since then, many types of uh, mesoporous materials have been described in the literature with many different applications. In the last few years, the biomedical world has shown a growing interest in these order mesoporous materials because they have two outstanding properties. The first one is their surface. They are formed by a silica network with silanol groups on the external surface. The second reason is based on their textural properties, especially in their order mesoporosity. Let us recall the presence of silanol groups on the walls of silica mesoporous materials. This is a common feature with uh, bioactive glasses, uh, which are materials used for bone substitution. But there are main differences that they exhibit an order mesostructure. They are amorphous materials, but with an order arrangement. In short, a large specific surface, a large number of silanol groups of the surface, and a large uncontrollable pore volume combined with an order mesostructure are all positive factors for devising multiple chemical choices to modify these materials in the desired direction. They are biocompatible and bioactive. Let's see now the second reason, the, their texture with other pores. In 2001, when our research group proposed disorder mesoporous materials as drug delivery system for the first time, I started this, uh, this, this field. If we analyze the size of biological active molecules, which are all in the nanometer scale, we may conclude that they can be introduced in the channels of these silica materials. The features of these materials are ideal for high reactivity purpose with the possibility of chemistry performance within the pores. They are amorphous materials with order mesostructure. Drugs can be loaded into mesoporous by simple impregnation of the material into drug concentrated solution to be then released through simple diffusion of the drugs as soon as in contact with the body fluids. Their textural properties play an important role in the load and release kinetics of biological active agents. Pore diameter acts as a size selective absorption parameter and also as a release rate modulator. Moreover, the absorption of molecules in this surface phenomenon and consequently surface area is a key factor in molecule absorption. In addition, pore volume is an important parameter when the aim is to confine really large size and volumes molecules such as proteins. And finally, the organic functionalization of mesoporous silicon goals with different organic groups has been acknowledged as a main factor governing the least kinetics. Since silica, mesoporous nanoparticles are currently being used in nanomedicine, in drug delivery, in gene transfection, and in sensor fabrication. Among the nanoparticles useful in nanomedicine, I will focus the mesoporous silica ones, which could be formed in the younger toolbox. I speak about mesoporous silica nanoparticles 
in the younger toolbox. And uh, first of all, we have to ensure that they do not aggregate. Second one, they seem invisible for the system. For the system. They target to the sale here. They must target the desired tissue in order to carry the relevant tracks in a specific function. While on route, they retain say drugs within the pores. And to this effect, they have to have molecule gates fitted, which open only once at the dest destination area by means of the certain stimuli. Let's see, uh, let's watch the video where these nanoparticles are used to treat the bone diseases. Our bones can suffer from various types of diseases. Cancerous tumors can grow inside bone tissue, disguised as healthy cells. Osteoporosis can hurt our bones' reconstruction. And bacteria can infect healthy bones or bone implants and create a protective biofilm resistant to our body's defenses. But fear not, because Professor Vadiet Drahi, as part of her work in the Verdi project, has developed a secret agent that can overcome anything. The Mesoporous Silica Nanoparticle. Our nanoparticles can be equipped with sophisticated weapons to fight toxic anti-cancer medications, biomolecules to fight osteoporosis, or antibiotics to defeat infectious bacteria. Avoid releasing medicine before the target site. The agents are dressed in special clothing, smart nano caps, or polymer coatings that help them recognize when they are at the target site. Clinicians can then use UV rays, ultrasound, or magnetic signals to manually trigger a release when needed. anti-cancer agent suit can sense contact with the rogue cancerous cell receptors. And with a little help from a clinician, the nano agent knows to release the drug inside the tumor cells. Our osteoporosis agents wear clothes that stick to the bones, waiting for an internal signal to release the active biomolecules. And our anti-infection agents can penetrate the biofilm and go behind enemy lines formed by bacteria and then release their antibiotics to kill them. Our nanoparticles are a versatile super agent that can recognize the threat and destroy the enemy while sparing the battlefield. Visit our website to learn more. The way to achieve their arrival to the target is by EPL effect. But it is not enough in many cases. It is then necessary to add a particular specificity that makes the nanoparticle reach to target through an active targeting. With EPL effect, is Quite nice, but it's not enough. The surface area of mesoporous uh, silicon nanoparticles is used to attach ligands that could drive side particles towards the tumor. For example, here, a folate, a cyclic peptide, or hyaluronic acid are attached to mesoporous silicon nanoparticles for targeting. Together with passive targeting mechanisms represented by EPRF effect, mesoporosilica nanoparticles can be targeted to the tumor. In this case, you can see that it uh, works very well with active 
an EPR effect together. Different uh, alternatives can be explored to ensure that nanocarriers reach specifically the tumor cells, adding a vector in agents to the external surface of the nanosystems. We can design ligands that, in a similar way to building blocks, can then be chosen to attach to the nanoparticles depending on the desired application. But uh, it will be better illustrated in the following video. Our bones are prone to diseases such as cancer, osteoporosis, and infections. Mesoporous silica nanoparticles provide solutions to these medical problems. Specific particles can be designed for each particular case. Scientists design these particles before their production and subsequent stock in a toolbox before being organized in a suitable storeroom. Some elements are used for internalization into the nanoparticle, whereas other elements are aimed at decorating the particle surface. The interior of the particle contains the drugs, antineoplastic toxins, anti-osteoporotic biomolecules, or antibiotics against infectious bacteria. The nanoparticle surface is used for coating molecular species, which allow nanoparticles to reach their target, make them invisible to the immune system, and may act as smart response-inducing stimuli. In order to prevent the unwanted early release of drugs by the nanoparticle in the bloodstream, nano caps to block the pores or total sealing by coating the nanoparticle surface can be developed. When reaching the disease tissue target, a suitable stimulus is applied to pop out the caps and release the trapped drug. Stimuli might be of different types, UV radiation, ultrasounds, or magnetic signals. In the case of osteoporosis, nanoparticles are submitted to an internal signal for releasing their cargo of active biomolecules. Anti-infection nanoparticles can penetrate the bacterial biofilm before delivering their antibiotic cargo. Those nanoparticles loaded with cytotoxins are able to kill cancer cells without damaging healthy cells. The group, led by Professor Vayet, has developed very versatile nanoparticles aimed at targeting a specific injury. According to a specific medical need, the suitable pieces are selected and conveniently prepared. A nanoparticle forms the frame for assembling the different pieces supplied by the toolbox as required for a personalized nanoparticle to be used in each patient. particles can transport widely different biomolecules depending on their mission. Uh, treatment cancer, osteoporosis, or infection. Let's see how they perform against infection in this uh, Did you know that the number of prosthesis implanted increases every year? Implanted prosthesis present a risk of infection between 0.5 and 2%. Although it could seem a low percentage, a large number of patients are affected above all if we take into account the high number of prosthesis that are implanted each year. For instance, in Europe, 1,200,000 hip prosthesis were implanted in 2018. It has been estimated that in 2025, the number of prosthesis will increase to 1,700,000. This means that 24,000 patients will be affected by infection with a total health cost of 1,700 million euros. 
When a prosthesis infection is detected, the treatment consists of a systemic administration of antibiotics, which usually involves long hospital stays. In most cases, a new surgical intervention is needed, leading often to a full prosthesis replacement. In the worst case scenario, the affected limb has to be amputated. And in 7% of infection cases, the patient dies. When certain microorganisms reach the implant surface, they adhere, multiply, and infect the bone. These infections provoking microorganisms are the bacteria and the difficulty to eliminate these microorganisms is mainly due to the fact that they can easily evade the antibiotics treatment. A bacteria defense mechanism is the formation of a protective film called biofilm. This biofilm is similar to a fortress which withstands the attacks from the pharmaceutical drugs, allowing the bacteria to become more resistant, form colonies and improve the thickness and resistance of the protective film. This structure is an outstanding defense mechanism mechanism for bacteria, blocking the penetration of antibiotics, just like a raincoat stops the water from passing through. Prior to biofilm formation, and due to the mistaken or excessive use of antibiotics, the bacteria can mutate and become even more resistant. This is a growing problem nowadays. If antibiotics are no longer valid, we cannot treat infection. In this scenario, the research carried out by Professor Maria ballet Raji faces two distinct challenges to prevent the infection, which means to avoid the arrival of bacteria and to kill the bacteria, even when the biofilm is already formed. Her Smart Biomaterials Research Group is a multidisciplinary team of chemists, engineers, biologists and pharmacists who work closely with clinicians with expertise in infection. When dealing with preventative strategies, Professor Marie ballet Reggi Research Group are able to modify the surface of prosthesis with the aim to block the bacterial adhesion to it and thus avoid the biofilm formation. In this sense, what they do is chemically treat the surfaces of the implants so that the outer shell holds positive and negative charges that tend to absorb water and repel bacteria. Infection can also be prevented by designing the implant surface with a topology similar to that of a lotus flower or insect wings, for instance, which is nature's way to avoid bacteria adhesion. If bacterial infection is already present, the second strategy must be implemented to destroy the biofilm so that the antibiotics can penetrate and kill bacteria, eliminating the infection. Professor Maria ballet Raji proposes the use of mesoporous silica nanoparticles to battle infection. Mesoporous silica nanoparticles are extremely small, about 800 times smaller than the thickness of a single hair, and they have plenty of pores, around 1,400 pores per particle. These pores are about two or three nanometers in diameter and about 100 nanometers in length, so they can hold many antibiotic molecules, as each antibiotic molecule measures about one nanometer or less. The group of Professor Maria ballet Regi is focused on loading the pores of these nanoparticles with pharmaceutical drugs while modifying the external surface of the nanoparticles with guiding molecules able to drive them towards the infected area with total specificity. The drugs are loaded inside the pores. Its surface can be modified by anchoring molecules able to direct them to the bacteria colony of the biofilm where they act. In the bloodstream, they can direct them to the objective, the infected bone. Once there, if the biofilm is not yet formed, the destruction strategy acts on the bacteria themselves, penetrating them. To achieve this, small amine molecules or macromolecules, such as dendrimas and catatonic polypeptides can be used. In this way, the particles are internalized inside the bacteria and kill them. If the biofilm is already formed, a destruction mechanism must be put in place. To destroy the biofilm, antibiotics are incorporated into the pores of the mesoporous silica nanoparticles and lectins on their surface. Lectins are molecules that specifically recognize the mucopolysaccharides present in the biofilm, and when the nanoparticles reach it, they release the antibiotic, eliminating the infection. In addition, mesoporous silica nanoparticles can house different drugs or antibiotic cocktails in their mesopores that act synergistically at the focus of the infection, resulting in a combination therapy. To summarize, we can prevent, break, and or eliminate the infection. To prevent infections, we are using materials with modified surfaces to inhibit bacterial adhesion and biofilm formation. In order to heal the infection, we can introduce the nanoparticles into the bloodstream 
once loaded with antibiotics and anchored molecules in their surface, which can direct them to the objective, the infected bone. In this way, mesoporous silica nanoparticles penetrate and destroy the biofilm and or bacteria. With all these possibilities, a personalized treatment is sought where a multidisciplinary team of experts will be able to design a customized therapy for each patient. Another application of these nanoparticles is in the fit against osteoporosis. A high a healthy bone exhibits a balance between osteoblast, bone forming cells, and osteoclast, bone destroying cells. When this balance disappears, a disease osteoporosis. This disease implies a high osteoclast activity against a decrease in osteoblast activity. Recently, the gen therapy with RNA silencers, CIRNAS, has gained plenty of attention and can be used to stimulate osteoblast activity. The main drawbacks in CIRNAS molecules treatment are their short contribution their short circulation period since they degrade quickly and their poor cell penetrations. There are two problems, short half-life and poor penetration capacity. But our nanoparticles could be an optimum vehicle for these molecules. The, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> the molecules are not uh, viable by themselves in the bloodstream due to their short lifetime. But they could be if carried carried in a vehicle because they would arrive in a shorter time. In this uh, simile, I have used a part as vehicle for the gene. Here. It, it transported faster and therefore it is effective. In order to solve these uh, issues with CIRNAS, our group postulated the use of uh, mesoporosilica nanoparticles as mo molecules carried towards the inner cells where they can play their role. Besides, the porous nature of the nanoparticles allow us to load them with additional therapeutic molecules, an osteogenic peptide, osteostatin, in this case, to achieve a dual therapy, hmm? osteostatin and CIRNAS. Nanoparticles are loaded with osteostatin and then coated with a polymer decorated with CIRNAS and the wall ensemble travels to and it's internalized in the cells. Uh, the carrier is internalized up to 85% for the full system. This image confirms the cell internalization of our nanoparticles with the silencer inside. Therefore, we have the same CIRNA carrier will solve his two main drawbacks, enable an effective treatment. Let's watch a video illustrating this process. In the last few decades, with the aging population, the prevalence of skeletal bone diseases has increased. In normal conditions, bone is continuously renewed by a coordinated process in which osteoclasts resorb the old bone and osteoblasts synthesize and mineralize new bone matrix. Imbalances in this process increasing the activity of osteoclast and reducing the activity of osteoblast produce a decreased bone mass and microarchitectural deterioration of bone tissue leading to a skeletal bone disease named osteoporosis. The conventional treatment options of osteoporosis focus on inducing the activity of osteoblast, thus increasing bone formation and suppression of osteoclast activity, preserving bone mass and increasing bone strength. Current pharmacological therapies are either partially effective or they present some limitations. Therefore, new alternatives are needed. 
In this respect, Professor Maria Bayet Rehi Research Group has used a different approach as a new potential and efficient treatment in osteoporosis. The wind beta catenin signaling pathway regulates bone formation. Sclerostin is one of the main inhibitors of this pathway and is increased in osteoporosis. The reduction of sclerostin keeps active this pathway and therefore increases bone formation. For this reason, silencing SOST gene, which encodes sclerostin, using siRNAs could be an effective way of reducing sclerostin expression for potentially treating osteoporosis. Unfortunately, when siRNAs are injected, they are rapidly degraded in blood. Therefore, they need a nanocarrier able to protect them for their transport to the target tissue, the osteoporotic bone. Mesoporous silica nanoparticles could be the perfect vehicle to transport and protect these siRNAs. These nanoparticles measure around 100 nanometers and present a huge amount of pores. Moreover, their surface could be modified with different polymers and molecules to provide them with different capabilities. One, protecting and delivering siRNAs. Two, guiding the nanoparticles to the osteoporotic bone. And three, make them invisible for the immune system. We can also take advantage of the high loading capacity of the nanoparticles to load the pores with a large amount of osteostatin, an osteogenic peptide which stimulates bone formation and reduces bone resorption. In this sense, we can address osteoporosis treatment by simultaneously increasing the formation of new bone and inhibiting bone resorption, reaching higher levels of efficacy. These nanoparticles have been tested in osteoporotic mice in order to evaluate their effect in the damaged bone. With this treatment, we have reached bone quality values similar to those in healthy bone and even superior to those with parathyroid hormone, the gold standard for osteoporosis treatment. Although there is still a long way to go, the research led by Professor Bayet Rehi is highly promising. The European Research Council Project Verdi aims the potential treatment of different bone pathologies through the development of versatile and polyvalent nanosystem. Another very important aspect in nanomedicine is the low penetration of nanoparticles inside the cells. This has to be solved if we want to this system to work. We will focus now in the nanocarrier penetration within the tumor tissue. The tumor extracellular matrix is characterized by his high collagen content. This dense extracellular matrix hinders the nanocarrier penetration and limits the effect of the drug carrier to the tumor environment. One solution is the manufacture of collagen NASA capsules attached to the nanoparticles. In this way, we have observed that the internalization reaches almost 100%. And in turn of these capsules, can be very useful in other applications, as you will see in the following video. Fibrosis is a pathology produced by the excessive growth of connective tissue in an organ or tissue produced by an abnormal reparative or inflammatory process. As a consequence, there is an increase in the production and accumulation of different components of the extracellular matrix in the tissue, composed mainly of collagen. Current treatments to reduce the excess collagen are surgery or administration of collagenase. Surgical procedures are highly invasive, with long recovery periods, and they can result in side effects such as infection and injuries in nerves, tendons, and vessels. Local administration of collagenase, an enzyme that degrades collagen, 
is injected into the fibrosclerotic tissue, reducing significantly the collagen fibers present in the fibrotic plaques. However, the main limitation on the employ of this enzyme is the duration of its action, as it loses its activity in less than 24 hours. To avoid this, it is necessary to inject multiple doses periodically, but this causes undesired side effects such as local pain and tissue damage due to excessive dosage. Thanks to the collaboration between the research group of Professor Maria Vallet Regi and that of Drs. Pablo Ortiz and Jose Luis Pablos of the Doce de Octubre Hospital, has been developed a novel methodology for the treatment of fibrosis. It is based on nanocapsules that protect the collagenase enzyme by covering it with a polymer. The steps of the method are, first, the collagenase nanocapsules are prepared in a personalized way for each patient. They can also be adapted to carry other drugs. Then, the nanocapsules are injected into the fibrotic region, and once in the fibrotic tissue, they are opened when ultraviolet light is applied, and they release the collagenase. <laughs> Professor Valiet's group has also developed nanocapsules that are injected in the bloodstream and they are distributed throughout the body. They are activated in the desired areas by irradiation of ultraviolet light. Only in this case, they release the collagenase. With this method, the nano-encapsulated collagenase is active for more than 10 days and efficiently destroys the collagen directly in the right area. In addition, phototherapy with ultraviolet light contributes to reducing the thickness and rigidity of the skin, given its potential anti-inflammatory effect, and increasing the production of collagenase in the tissue. This has a double beneficial effect, activating the controlled release of collagenase in the desired tissue and generating a therapeutic effect by itself. Professor Valiet Regi Group has also developed another novel methodology to produce polymeric nanocapsules that are activated by an internal stimulus such as pH. This property has been employed to release collagenase in tumor tissues with an acidic environment in order to degrade the extracellular matrix and to increase the penetration of nanotherapeutic agents. And uh, with all this, I hope that I have managed to illustrate the promising future of mesoporosilica nanoparticles in the field of nanomedicine. Thank you very much for attention.